This is going to be the second video in my series on using LumaBot to create an algorithmic trading bot. And I'm going to be demonstrating this using a paper trading account from Alpaca Markets. So if you haven't seen my first video already, you're probably going to want to take a look at that because in there I talk about setting up this environment and setting up your account with Alpaca and some other important things that I'm not going to cover in this video. So here we're just going to sort of focus on oh, what's the trading logic for creating this algorithmic trading bot. All right, and I should start out by saying that this video is for education purposes only. Uh, you should not use it for uh, trading advice. So in this video, I just want to focus on the trading logic. So I've gone ahead and set up the environment where we're going to have to do some imports, right? So I'm going to get date time and I'm using that to uh, conduct back testing. Eventually, uh, I'm getting a, a back testing agent from LumaBot. Uh, I'm getting some parameters from LumaBot to see whether or not we're going live with this or we're testing it. And uh, then the, the main algorithm is going to be uh, inheriting from this strategy class and then to actually place orders uh, we're going to use the trader class okay so down here at the bottom once I write all the logic uh, we're going to go through we're going to see if we're back testing and if we are we'll actually do the back test and uh, you can see that I'm going to be using Nvidia so I'm going to be trying to capture some momentum in Nvidia and I'm going to do it multiple times throughout a day and uh, we're going to see how that compares to just buying Nvidia and holding it. All right, so then if we're not back testing, uh, I'm going to set up the parameters to actually start placing trades on uh, Alpaca. And, and hopefully we'll be able to actually see this algorithm place a few trades. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started on the code that we're going to write. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a class. And I'm just going to name the class what I would call the algorithm. So I'll just call it swing high here. And it has to inherit from strategy. And then when I inherit from strategy, I actually have access to what they call at Lumi Wealth the life cycle methods of a trading bot. So uh, why don't we just take a quick look there at the documentation. Okay, so these are the life cycle methods of that strategy class. All right, so uh, we have defaults for all of these except for on trading iterations. So this is basically the meat of your trading algorithm. Anything that you want to do is going to be contained in there. These other methods have defaults and then we can override them or overload them by defining our own code that goes inside these methods. All right, so I'm going to just use a few of them. I'm going to use initialize. I'm going to use on trading iteration and then uh, I'm going to use before market closes. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is set some parameters for our bot and parameters can contain whatever you like. Generally, it's going to contain, you know, the symbols of things you want to buy, maybe some weights for things you want to buy, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm just going to put a symbol in here and uh, the quantity that I'm going to be uh, buying when I go ahead and buy. All right, next I am going to start working on that initialize method. Here I'm going to set things like, oh, the frequency. How often do I want the algorithm to run? So maybe every day, maybe every minute, maybe every hour, something like that. The default is for it to run every day. All right, so uh, I'm going to override that. And I want to see this actually in action. So I'm going to set the frequency quite high. All right, so it's going to run every five seconds. All right, and then I'm going to define some variables that I want my algorithm to have access to. All right, but I don't want to run the potential of polluting the namespace with uh, variables that, oh, strategy is already using. All right, so I don't want to shadow any of the variables. And so I am going to define these with this self.vars object. All right, it's basically a dictionary inside uh, LumiBot uh, for this purpose. All right, and so I'm going to have to keep track of some data, and uh, I'm going to be doing that in a list. All right, so we'll start with an empty list, and then I'm going to need to keep track of oh, what order number am I on. All right, and I'll start at zero. Okay, so that's what I'm doing for initialize. Uh, next, right, we're just going to start writing the logic of the actual algorithm. All right, and that is going inside of on trading iteration. 
All right, so the first thing I'm going to do then is set a symbol to use on each iteration. And I'm going to go ahead and get that from that parameters dictionary. All right, I want to get the last price and I'm going to call it entry price. All right, I'll pass in the symbol. And then I'm going to do some sort of diagnostics in the terminal. So when the thing actually runs live, we'll get a few messages printing in the in the terminal. And uh, we can use this for debugging or to sort of confirm what we think is happening is actually happening. So the first thing I'm going to do is log a message that shows me any positions I have. Okay, and then I'm going to start adding prices into that data variable that I set up above uh, to keep track of, okay, what is the status? Am I ready to place a trade or not? All right, so the basic logic here is going to be that, oh, I'm going to be trying to catch some momentum. So we're going to look at the last three prices, and when the last price there is higher than the previous two, uh, we're going to place a trade. Okay, so that's the preliminaries, and then I'm just going to go into the logic. All right, and like I said, uh, we're going to need three prices before we can start to place a trade. So I'm going to look at the length of that variable. All right, and I, I want to wait until there's at least four prices in there before I can actually place a trade. And then I'm going to create a temporary holding place for just the last three. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to start evaluating whether or not a trading condition has is, is been met. So we'll look at the last price in temp. And when that is greater than the second price, and then that one is greater than the first price. All right, so that's the first condition. Uh, and then I want to make sure I still have some money in the account. Otherwise, I'm going to keep trading and go on margin. And I want to make sure I don't do that. All right, so I'm going to go and get my cash. And uh, I want to make sure that I have enough to buy the 100 shares. So I'm just going to make sure it's at least 20,000. And I'm going to print another log message here just to make sure that once we place a trade that it should have placed a trade. So essentially a diagnostic here. OK, and so now we've met a condition to place an order. So I'm going to create an order. And I'm going to use that symbol, and I'm going to use my quantity. And I'm going to have to tell it what side I want, buy or sell. So I'm just going to go long, and then I'm just going to submit that order. OK, and I will uh, increment my order number. OK, so now we're in and then we have to start thinking about, OK, when do we exit? So I'm going to I'm going to set some conditions for exiting. Uh, I'm going to set them pretty tight just so uh, when I go ahead and back test, we can see this thing working, placing buys, placing sells. All right. I don't expect this is going to make any money. All right. But it'll just give you an idea of, oh, if I want to do something like this and I want to set my own parameters, how will I do that? All right. And yeah, I'm going to be making the code available on GitHub if you don't want to sort of type along as, as I'm going. All right, so what I'm going to do next is, since we could go through, all right, in the next five seconds, place another buy order, and then five seconds later, place another buy order, if NVIDIA continues to move up, uh, I'm going to set this first entry, when the order number is one, I'm going to set that as the entry price for the entire position. All right, so we're just assuming that we're going to enter on uh, whatever that last price was. It should be within a few pennies of that, all right? And OK, yes, I could place an order that was a limit order and make sure that I'm not uh, buying it higher than that. But I I'm not going to do that because I want to see this actually place some trades when I go live, all right? But yeah, it's probably a good idea to set some kind of limit order rather than just a market order like I've done. So this is everything we need to do to keep track of uh, the orders uh, that are long and now we have to start thinking about okay when do we cut our losses and when do we take profit all right so like I said I am going to set these parameters pretty tight so that we can actually see some activity uh, when I go to back test this so we'll assume that we have a position right and uh, I'm just gonna test it first all right so I'm gonna use get position 
All right, and th this is going to be the cell condition. All right, so I want a second condition here. All right, so that condition is going to be the last price. All right, is uh, less than the entry price. All right, and and we'll we'll allow it to lose say a, a quarter of a percent. And uh, this is pretty straightforward. We're just going to self dot sell all. All right, so if I had other positions in here besides NVIDIA, uh, this would sell those positions as well. All right, but since I know I don't, then this is fine. Uh, if you're implementing this on multiple symbols, you would have to add additional logic to, uh, to control for that. But the other thing I need to do there is reset my order number. All right, and then we can uh, set the profit taking condition. will get out when uh, we've made a 1%. All right, and then this is essentially the entire algorithm. And then uh, I don't want to be holding positions overnight, so I'm going to override one more of those lifecycle methods, and it's going to be uh, before market closes. All right, and if I want a different default, I can set that up in the initialize method here. All right, but the default is five minutes, so 355 every day. We're just going to go ahead and self sell all. All right, so this first time through, I'm going to try to run it live, and we're going to see if I can do all this without making any mistakes. Uh, we'll see if it places an order, and then I'll come back and back test it. And then the only difference here from the uh, first video, where I just sort of buy something and hold it for an extended period of time, is I'm using a different back testing agent. All right, so I'm using Polygon. All right, and Polygon's a, a data API. Uh, I'm using a free account, and, and then there are some limitations to the free accounts. So since I'm doing it very frequently, I'm only going to maybe back test for about a week or so. Anyway, that will make the back test run more quickly. All right. But, it, you know, if you were doing this for a live algorithm, I think you would want to probably back test it longer. And then you might have to consider a paid account on Polygon for that. So let me go ahead and set that. And let's see. It is... Okay, about the middle of, well, at the end of uh, November here for this video. And uh, so we'll go back about a week when I go ahead and back test it. All right, but let's try it live and let's see what happens. All right, it is going to have to go ahead and, you know, wait about 15 seconds before it's possible to start trading. All right, so we're going to see it running every five seconds. Hopefully this won't take too long. If it does, I'll just fast forward. Let's we'll see if we can get a, an order placed. All right, so you can see that it did actually place an order there, and uh, I'm going to leave it running here for a minute. It, it bought another one here. It looks like maybe we should have uh, three or four hundred shares of Nvidia, so I'm going to switch out to Alpaca and and see what's going on there. All right, so there is my position right there. As I said, it was going to be three or four hundred, and okay, looks like we have uh, three hundred, and and so far we've made oh seven dollars. Just updated. I liked it a, a second ago before it, it updated. All right, so if I sit here long enough, it will probably show me a, another trade placed. All right, and if I, I sort of scroll down here, I can see those trades. All right, and I can get more information about the each order if I need to. All right, so it looks like the algorithm pretty much does what it's expected to do and okay yes it's actually placing at least paper trades here and uh, let's go and try back testing it to see what happens if I do this for about a week all right so I'm gonna kill that and uh, I'm going to go into my environment file here and I'm gonna change the back testing to true all right and then we'll run it again with a back test Okay, so we can see it's getting the data from Polygon, and uh, you can kind of see what's going on here with my balance over this last week. All right, so it looks like I made a little bit of money here. And then once this back test is done, we're going to see the a couple of reports, right? One of them is going to be uh, generated by LumaBot, which essentially shows our equity line over this period in the back test. And uh, the other one is an extensive report from QuantStats, which LumaBot wraps around and, and they've customized that somewhat. All right, so let me get back to that. Ooh, 
that's not so good. Uh, let me get back to the uh, LumaBot report here. And so you can see, right, the green line is my cash. And okay, so I bought, and it looks like I bought a whole bunch there in rapid succession. All right, and then uh, it looks like, you know, I sold them at the end of the day. So I never met that closed condition uh, throughout the day. All right, so the, the blue line is my strategies performance. And then the red line is, oh, what would happen if I bought NVIDIA at the beginning of the day, sold it at the end of the day for those, you know, five trading days that are that are seen here. All right, so we can see that they're, okay, yeah, they're pretty much uh, about the same. All right, so let's go quickly look at that quant stats. All right, and then if I scroll down here far enough, I can see uh, what what would have happened if I had bought the NVIDIA straight up or if I had just used my uh, strategy. And, and it looks like, yeah, they perform about the same, but if I annualize that, right, so there's some rounding in there. If I annualize this, okay, this strategy is gonna do uh, worse than, than buying and holding. And, and, and yeah, keep in mind, I only, I only tried it for a week. It's possible that it would do something different if we uh, tested a, a longer period of time, all right? But yeah, as I said at the beginning, I, d I don't expect that this strategy would actually work, but I wanted to show you the ins and outs of, of doing something a little bit more complicated than in the first video where we just bought something and held it. All right, so I hope that helps and I will follow this up with more algorithmic trading videos.